Um, <laughs> my first ever documentation contribution was actually to Drupal, but now we're going to talk about using Drupal to manage documentation instead. It's Kitty Rag Radovich, Radovich. <laughs> okay, from Provence. Yeah. Thank you very much. So. <laughs> so, hi everyone. Um, just let me know when you can't hear me in the back. I will try to speak up. <laughs> So, yeah, it will be a session about dogs like code in Drupal. And um, first, I would like to say some words about the dogs like code approach. And um, after that, I would like to tell you about our open source product um, in Drupal, which uses this concept. So, I'm Kitty Radovic, and I'm a product owner at Pronovix. And, um, I'm working on developer portals mostly, and, um, and I am the product owner of this uh, open source tool that I'm going to talk about. Um, yeah, and um, why docs like code? So what does docs like code mean? Docs like code is uh, basically a workflow for uh, creating a documentation um, and uh, generate documentation um, um, in web format. Uh, first of all, when talking about docs like code, uh, the main, the key point is to, uh, is using a um, version control system like uh, GitHub, but of course you can use other services. Um, we use GitHub in our product. And uh, thanks to GitHub, it's uh, very easy to keep, keep pace with the uh, code changes. So um, when the code changes, uh, documentarians can track the changes and see if the documentation is not updated um, to the code changes and um, um, update them according to uh, the code. After that, uh, yeah, it's a unified collaboration environment because uh, documentarians don't have to learn a new, new tool for documentation creation. So GitHub is uh, very easy to use. It has a lot of documentation about how to use it. So it's very easy to um, learn the tools that GitHub provides. Uh, other than that, uh, um, GitHub means collaboration. So the contributors can collaborate using the GitHub UI. And um, of course, anyone can contribute, anyone who has access to the repository. And uh, this doesn't just mean um, technical writers, but also developers um, uh, who can, for example, write, um, um, write notes about the code changes and technical writers can extend the documentation and um, fix the typos and um, uh, make uh, sentences from the notes. Um, and uh, thanks to GitHub, it's uh, very easy to integrate it with a continuous integration tool. And um, for example, uh, Jenkins or Travis CI. And it's also uh, useful for static site generators uh, because static site generators are the um, well-known uh, tool for creating uh, docs or using this docs like road concept. And um, static site generators uh, basically grab the, the content mostly written in Markdown and uh, templates and they, um, they create uh, the final static site in HTML and with all the assets. Uh, yes, and uh, these continuous integration tools can trigger the generation of documentation. But um, yeah, sometimes static sites are not enough. So um, with CMSs, we can um, substitute the role of uh, static site generators. And uh, w w with CMSs, we use the same workflow for creating documentation. But um, uh, at the end, the, um, the docs are displayed using a CMS. Um, and um, yeah, I want to use a CMS because um, there are specific um, use cases when it's um, beneficial for beneficial using a CMS instead of a static site generator. For example, uh, if you have a, 
as much content as the static site generator takes too long time to create the docs. And um, with CMSs, we can reduce this time because uh, CMSs do not, CMSs doesn't regenerate the, the site itself. It just, they just add uh, new content to it. Um, other than that, uh, it's also useful when you you, doesn't, you don't need just uh, docs, but you also need other content like landing pages or marketing or blog content. And uh, CMSs has, have um, great tools for creating landing pages. For example, in Drupal we use the paragraphs module for landing page creation, and it's um, very easy to use. And uh, um, for example, um, content writers can create landing pages without writing actual HTML. Um, and uh, it's also useful if you need uh, search because uh, yeah, static site generators usually have a simple keyword search, but as they don't have a database back in, behind the static site, they cannot provide um, advanced search functionalities. So with the CMS you can also uh, have an advanced keyword search and uh, you can also use faceted search for field and in text categories. Um, yeah, next one is uh, role-based access control. Um, this basically means that you don't have to create separate pages uh, for um, each audience. So, for example, you can have all the docs for, uh, for private usage and for internal usage and also for partners and you can control the access to the content using um, the CMS uh, role-based access control functionalities. Uh, you can also uh, create a widget that can interact with the, with the API itself. So if you are documenting an API and you are importing the, for example, with open API spec, you can also um, create a tool for uh, for uh, trying out the APIs on the fly. And uh, yeah, last one is um, it's about gamification. So gamification is for encouraging docs to be, to be excellent and not just to write docs because the documentarians need to write docs at the end because um, developers won't understand the product without docs. So uh, they need to provide something just before releasing a product. But with gamification, you can write docs uh, from the beginning, and um, you can write, um, mm, so you can encourage your developers and your documentarians to um, always uh, improve the documentation. For example, this can in include a specific uh, rating, um, features so if uh, someone someone likes the docs and um, rates it as useful so rates it somehow or marks it as useful then um, you can um, evaluate your documentation and see which um, pages are useful and which pages has to be have to be improved okay so now I would like to talk about um, the open source product we created in Drupal. So um, we already had something bef before a meeting docs like code. Um, the first version had a um, UI for um, adding the markdown content to the documentation. So as you can see, um, uh, UI, on the UI, the documentarians were able to add the title and the body in markdown format and display it as a, um, um, you know, one page uh, format uh, with a navigation on the left. And um, we also wanted to integrate with uh, the open API spec. And um, the, in the first version, we had a file uploader on the UI. And um, yeah, content editors could also add additional <coughs> tags and the version to it. And uh, it, has, um, it had a very um, simple layout that can be seen on the left hand side. Um, but after adapting docs like code, um, we created a, 
um, step-by-step form for, Im uh, for importing uh, docs at the same time. In the first step, uh, um, GitHub uh, account has to be selected, or you can add a new if, uh, if you want. Uh, the second step is uh, choosing the repository. Um, you can either add a um, public repository or choose a private one based on the account you selected. Um, the thir third step is uh, about uh, choosing the files to import. Um, on the top there's an um, import title can be specified and um, then you can choose the content to import from the repository. Um, as you can see, um, there are markdown and uh, then the assets imported into the markdown content. But uh, you can also see that there is a JSON file which is in OpenAPI spec, so you can import all your docs at the same time, basically. Uh, after choosing the files, um, there are some um, configurations that can be made to the import. For example, uh, as markdown files have, have the same extension, um, we created a plugin based uh, markdown format selector uh, where you can choose which markdown format you use in your docs. And it can be also extended by other formats. And on the downside, um, you can select uh, how the, the Swagger or Open API spec files are uh, ended. So it's necessary because if you store your uh, documentation together with your code sources, it can happen that you use JSON format for other configurations or other settings. So we created this kind of solution to uh, separate um, open API specs and other JSON or GEMO files. Yeah, and uh, update settings. Um, so this is about um, publishing changes automatically, um, which means that uh, Drupal imports the changed content um, with its uh, cron service, um, which runs uh, periodically. And uh, if it, it detects the changes and, it's in, and it imports the docs when the change happened. And uh, if this option is selected, then the changes get automatically published on the site. Uh, in, in the other case, uh, you can review the changes and publish uh, the docs manually. Um, the next step, um, there's an option to choose the hierarchy where the documentation will be imported. Uh, so if you combine uh, separate docs into one documentation hierarchy, you can do by selecting the same hierarchy and order the pages later. So after importing the docs, uh, this is how it looks like. So the order is, um, uh, is based on the alphabetic order of the files. And uh, they can be ordered with this uh, Drupal drag and drop UI. And uh, yes, and uh, after that it looks like this. So it creates a one, one single page from all the imported docs. Uh, with the navigation on the left hand side and um, for the open API spec we use the Swagger UI as a renderer for now because it's very easy to use and to do some basic theming to it and it looks nice but we would like to create a um, more advanced Drupal based um, an entity based uh, Open API specification, which splits up the Open API specification into different uh, entities and um, defines the relationships to each other and uh, render the documentation uh, with this entity based system. Uh, yes, and the markdown docs are rendered in simple HTML, and uh, we also included an edit on GitHub button next to the imported files, uh, below the imported files uh, title. Um, this allows users to go straight, go straight to the repository where the documentation was imported from and make the changes there. So the 
so the changes will happen in the repository. The Drupal is only for rendering the docs. Um, with this chart, I visualize the, the workflow for creating uh, the docs like code approach docs in Drupal. So uh, the first step is to upload the docs to GitHub and import docs into Drupal, order them in Drupal and publish them. This is basically what I just show with the uh, screenshots. And uh, after that, the uh, updates to documentation can happen two ways. The top part is about um, uh, if you want to change the docs, uh, you visit one of your docs in Drupal, uh, click on the edit on GitHub button, push your changes to GitHub. These changes get reviewed and approved by one of, one of the contributors or one of the reviewers, and the changes get merged into, uh, into the documentations or repository, then uh, the changes can be published automatically, basically, in, in Drupal. The other way is, um, so another um, yeah, um, way to uh, update the docs is when um, another user finds an error or some typo in the docs and uh, visits the documentation. Um, pushes the, the corrections or the changes to the docs, you review, your you review the changes and um, merge the changes into the repository, then it gets um, automatically updated and published on the Drupal site. Um, there's a very important use case of um, this Drupal-based um, documentation uh, publishing. Uh, and this is about contributing to upstream projects. So usually there's problem with um, using upstream docs and changing upstream docs because um, usually happens that people uh, pull the docs from GitHub or fork them and um, make changes to the upstream docs in locally, basically, without contributing back to the, the base repository. Uh, and with this solution, uh, we can encourage people to contribute straight back to the upstream docs. So um, if uh, you find an upstream documentation in GitHub, you can import it and um, you can also mix it with your docs. But the key is that um, after publishing the, the upstream docs in Drupal, uh, and uh, changes has to be happened in the upstream docs, then the um, visitor goes straight to the, uh, the, to the repository of the upstream documentation, and uh, the changes can happen right there. And after uh, merging the changes, our documentation can be updated uh, ba based on the changes in the upstream documentations repository. The other way to um, update the upstream documentation it can be happen externally, so without visiting our site. Uh, and if uh, someone finds a um, change to be made on the docs, uh, the changes can be applied uh, in GitHub, merged, and then our docs are also updated. So it doesn't matter if the change is triggered from, by visiting our docs or other place where the upstream doc is published, our uh, uh, documentation will be always updated and the uh, upstream docs uh, will get the contribution. Yes, and uh, we have this open source product, but we are still, we're still planning, uh, we are still planning to um, implement uh, other features than, um, than we have now. So the open API specification is a um, bit granular in our system. So we would like to simplify it a bit. As I said, we split up uh, the open API spec into um, multiple Drupal entities and it seems a bit granular right now. So we want to simplify it a bit. Um, 
Yes, uh, and I already mentioned the try it out function that uh, CMSs can provide. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have this functionality just yet, but we are strongly working on it because it's a very great way for developers to, to try out the, the APIs and just copy paste the code and, and uh, use the APIs very easily. Uh, third one is the uh, is about a standalone service service for importing docs from uh, git based repositories so we would like to make it vendor independent and uh, implement a simple uh, service for an, uh, an external service for uh, importing um, documentations yes and uh, as I said um, the documentation structure is um, uh, ordered alphabetically by default, so we would like to use the Markdown data uh, standard map files format for setting up the hierarchy of the documentation. Uh, as it's uh, as it's demo based, so it can be very easily integrated into Drupal 8, and uh, it's very easy to use because. Uh, it uses uh, Markdown, yeah. And um, our open source uh, um, product is split up into two different Drupal modules, which can be uh, downloaded or or uh, pulled from GitHub. You can find them there. And uh, if you have any questions, just come to me, and I try to answer. <laughs> Thank you. Questions? Uh, so, yeah, if anyone has any, then please go. Uh, do you have plans to support OpenAPI 3.0 spec? Sorry? OpenAPI 3.0 spec. It's uh, currently supporting version 2.0 of OpenAPI specification, right? Yes. So, do you have plans to include the OpenAPI 3.0 spec? Uh, yeah, we are planning that, but we, are, we haven't finished the 2.0 version <laughs> so far, but yes, we are planning. And also regarding the like the generation of code snippets uh, using YAML code and so because on lots of our developers are using code snippets uh, regarding the API. Yeah. So do you have plans to include the Yes, snippets? and we are also planning to import um, code snippets right from the repositories and um, code sources basically. <laughs> yes, so when we started our product, um, we, we, we were thinking a lot about which uh, format to support, and we chose, chose OpenAPI because it's, um, the, um, it's a very commonly used <coughs> format. But yes, we are prepared for the extension, so yeah, later we may support other formats as well. Uh, for the documentation, yes, it's Markdown, but it's a plugin-based importer, so basically any format can be imported. Yes. Um, when you talk about upstream documentation and downstream, the downstream one, do you have changes? Like, you want to maintain like a slight difference in documentation? And if so, how do you deal with? Like, you must just have to deal with merge. Um, when importing upstream docs, uh, you just pull the documentations and you don't change it locally. So there shouldn't happen any conflicts. So when you talk about upstream and downstream, they should be identical, ideally. So um, they are totally, um, so downstream and upstream are not uh, connected technically. They just, um, they are just displayed in the same documentation page. The um, so the so the um, downstream is not the way so it's um, not forked basically just um, downstream means that you display the content in your site okay. so, you should, so no, no we have time for maybe one more or we we'll just take a quick dead room break <laughs> <laughs> Okay, thank you. Thank you.